I am Dr. Laura Green. I'm a professor of physics at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I was born on the east side of Cleveland, and we all think of that as a suburb of New York City. Um, it's a very crowded suburb, and from a very, very, very young age, before even um, kindergarten, I knew I was interested in science. I knew I wanted to, I memorized all the distances of the planets from the sun, and just had all these posters up, and I was just totally addicted as as a very young child, and I think that's probably true for many women my age who weren't encouraged to do science. I always like to use the statement that I was hardwired to do science at a very young age, and I really loved it. I probably spent more time doing music, uh, folk music, rock and roll. When I went to college and I went to Ohio State, my mother wanted me to major in elementary education because for a woman that's a reasonable thing to be educated. Um, and you'll have your summers off for your children and reasonable hours. And I really wanted to do science. And she says, I can't support you unless you get a teaching certificate. So I kind of looked into everything and I learned that there was something called engineering. I don't come from an educated family, so I, uh, I talked to the engineering college. Again, this is 1970 before women's lib. And unabashedly, I was told, you really shouldn't measure, major in engineering because when you get your degree you'll be asked if you can type. I mean they just don't hire women in engineering. But I managed to get some scholarship help. Um, every year that I did physics, somehow I just knew that that passion for doing science wasn't going to die. When I don't get a job in physics, that's when I'll sell shoes. I really like shoes <laughs> and I'm going to be a shoe, shoe salesperson and that's what I was going to do. Um, but what I study is quantum mechanics. And I do superconductors and magnetic materials. It's all strongly correlated electron systems, and it's all quantum mechanics. You can't smell, taste, feel, see quantum mechanics. You have to come up with ideas. You can pretend you understand it, but you have to then design your experiments to test your hypotheses. And the truth is that the physical laws that we had don't pertain to all materials. Okay, 1911 superconductivity is discovered by Henke Kamerlikonis in Leiden. He finds that it looks like the resistance goes to zero. There's a critical temperature, a critical magnetic field, and a critical current. Amazing stuff. These are all analogies to help us understand what's going on. They all break down when you push them too far. Do you know why the silicon looks purple there? It's kind of fun. No idea. Okay, well, it's oxide is coating the silicon. Yeah. Okay, so you're seeing the interference. Oh. So that tells you approximately okay. the thickness. When we talk about science and superconductivity and Bose-Einstein condensation, we use the same words that people use when they discuss matter at extreme conditions, like what they'll be using inside nuclear reactors or just studying high energy cosmological problems, and it's broken symmetries, um, uh, strongly correlated fermionic systems. And what I'm fond of saying is that superconductivity is the same physics as matter at extreme conditions, uh, but at about 10 to the Avogadro's number times lower energy. If I can have a student leave my lab and have an idea what scientific method is, um, that's the best knowledge they can take with them anywhere. I think educating the public and, and our policymakers is very important. We need to look and see how can we make superconductors that are more reliable, will carry more current, and not produce the amount of heat and the loss. People that are passionate in science are typically passionate about many other things. And that's important. That drives you. That gets you out of bed in the morning. Honestly, figuring out how that electron gets across that interface really does get me out of bed in the morning. I know that sounds silly, but it does. When you run into barriers because you're a minority or you have some other problems, there's always, there's usually people there that will just come out of the woodwork and be there for you. So for, for the same people that tell you not to do it, you'll find people that will be very supportive. I think physicists and mystics both have this feeling that there is some pattern to the universe. I actually believe that through scientific method, by figuring out this pattern, we'll get there. So maybe you can't understand what a religion tells you, but I can disseminate information of science, and if we're all going to get there, science may be able to build, help build this pattern, and it will take many generations. But um, 
to help us understand that we're all part of the same fabric. That might be wrong, but I'm willing to go forth and test that hypothesis.